Welcome. We'll talk about Citrix and terminal servers. I have found some new stuff about published applications, and um, I will show them how to to connect to these published applications. But with a Citrix client, you uh, can't do that. Um, first, I have to say um, that this presentation will be up later on this web page. Uh, also, the programs you have on your CD is like old, it's like very, very old, it's like three months old or something. <laughs> so there are new stuff uh, there as well. And I think there, the tools are there or, or already. And then um, about questions, um, if in if something is really not clear, okay, you can ask for it, but otherwise it's better for you to come up to see me or m one of my friends who have all these t-shirts. Yeah, Rickard is sitting there, you can wave. Give Rickard a hand, no? So, you don't have to take notes, really. I will also make uh, make uh, Dark Tanya to put a link on, on, on this page from my part on the defcon.org. So, we will talk about what is terminal servers, terminal services, well, one slide or something, and then how to abuse terminal services, and scanning non, for non-public published applications, like there are published applications that are public, that you could reach, can reach, and there are several servers out there that has public, published applications, but you can't just see them or connect to them. Um, I will make a demonstration of this machine. This is a freshly installed uh, Citrix server with some published applications. It has two network interfaces with one network interface is is um, is um, is a master browser. It's called Pub, uh, Citrix master browser, and I can't reach it from this computer. I will now do show you how, how it can be done. And um, then I will show statistics from a very large scan. It was scanned for some millions of IP addresses. I will not tell you how many servers I've found, but I will tell you about the statistics about them. So, what is terminal services? Well, it's like a remote multi-user desktop. It's more or less like X, you know, it's not that fancy for us Unix freaks, but for, for Windows it's really weird that you, like, like starts an application on one server, it runs over at the server, and only the, the uh, changes in the window is going over the network to you, to the client. Okay, so it's like sitting locally on, on a PC, but over a network. So everything, you have just a, a client to connect to the server, and everything is run on the server. No, so you have to remember that. And Citrix has a feature called published application. And this means like, well, we'll come very much into that, but it's, it is like you can execute a program like Word or something. And you can like say to a server, what applications do you have that I can run? And it says like Word, okay, try well, let's try it. So it's, it's, it's a little bit weird. So everything works fine and it's really beautiful, this, this uh, terminal services, because it's, you no longer have to like, like download lots of data and, and programs over your modem line. Because it's uh, the only thing that's good is like changes on the on the desktop, and it's very fast and very very nice. I really like it. But there are some 
weird things that you really have to know setting this up. There are like, like there are several people running different desktops on the Citrix server, okay? And that means like, like the Citrix server starts up lots of desktops and then sends the changes of the, each desktop to the right client, okay? If, if you own the Citrix server, you have like access to all these desktops, of course. So that, that's a little bit weird. So elevation of rights, and this is, is done on Windows 2000. So um, I usually use PipeApp Admin or PipeApp SAM. There are some different uh, tools for uh, elevation, elevation of rights on MT. Uh, you also, when you're starting up your application, your, your published application like, like Notepad or something, it's just Notepad, nothing there. Or is it? Well, the desktop is there, but it's just hidden. You, you can start it up and everything. The problem is like breaking out from the, from the, um, the given environment that you have. And one more really fun thing about, or weird thing about Citrix is like that some, you can say like, this, these published applications are anonymous. Okay, this means like, you're sitting on the internet, a Citrix server has published application that you can connect to anonymously and execute the, this published application. You break out from that environment and upload your, your cool new elevation write stuff to it, elevate your rights, and you have the whole server with lots, like lots of users and bosses and so on to it, reading their mail and so on. So it's, so it's, so it's quite fun. There are, there are, so how, how do you find these published applications? I, I think the, for, uh, the fastest way to find like published application is to port scan for the TCP port for, uh, 1494. It's like the Citrix. You, you always need that port. If you don't have that port, you can't connect. So it's, it's very easy to just scan for it. But it's even easier to just search for like published application that, that companies are publishing for you, like demos and so on. And it's weird how many service is out there just want you to like take over their network. <laughs> and, and the use, uh, if you find a, a port 1494, you can use a Citrix client to en enumerate the published application. It's, it's, you start up the Citrix network client or something, what's it called? Citrix client, and make a new connection and so say it's like, I want to connect to this Citrix server and what kind of published application does it have? And so it's like, yeah, these, and yeah, oh, cool. You can start checking. Here's a, a network dump from a normal Citrix client published application enumeration session, okay? It's, it's like the Citrix client is asking the server, like, what kind of published applications do you have? But the client do this in this way. I don't see if you see the, the cursor here, but here's the client asking the, the uh, Citrix server. It's a UDP, UDP uh, question on port 1604. So, the Citrix client, the Citrix client sends a first package asking, where is the master browser? And response will be like, the, the master browser is C1, OB, OC, OD. C1, OB, OC, OD. It's uh, like twice. It's, it's not, yeah. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm lying a little bit, but, but more or less. <laughs> and then 
But this C1OBCOD is an IP address. So if you just make from hex to digits, so then the client will ask, of course, the server, okay, I hope I'm, you are the master browser, give me your published applications. And the, the server will yeah, enumerate all the published applications for you. But this is some problems. What happens if the master browser is not public? The client asks first, like, where is the master browser? And it says, like, it's on, it's on the 10 network, like our internal network, it's firewalled and everything. And the Citrix server, the Citrix client, will try to connect to this 10 address, this private address, but will fail. So you have, you have written a small tool that just asks the Citrix server directly, give me your published applications. Because otherwise, if you use the Citrix client connecting to a Citrix server and ask the server for published applications, of course the client asks, uh, where is the master browser? And the server answers like it's 10.11.12.13. So the client tries to connect to it, and of course, no connection. Uh, the little Perl script I've written, it, it only works in, in Unix because it's using alarm functions. Um, it's using um, blocking, blocking sockets. Uh, I only send, like, give me all your, your published applications and it works perfectly, you know, it's, it's beautiful. So it's, it just sends back one or more package of, of uh, published applications. Very cool. I'll show you later. <laughs> it, so, and it's, but, but connecting to, to these published applications, okay, you have a list now, okay, here's, here's the published applications, but how should you connect to it? Because uh, like, like the Citrix client is, is not open source, what I know, and, um, and um, there are really weird stuff you have to do to connect. It's, it's not, hard stuff, but it's weird stuff. Because the Citrix client, you have to spoof the, uh, the answers from the, from the Citrix server twice. There's uh, the master browser, master browser spoof, like, like and, and the application server spoof. I will show you, it's, it's, it's not that hard. And, I have written two programs that can connect to directly to the to the um, uh, published applications on the, on the, when the, when the when the non master uh, when the master browser is, is is not public. I will just show you how the connection to a to a, a published application goes. First, the client asks, "Give me." Where, where, is, where is the master browser? And the server will tell it, yeah, it's this non-public non IP address, so I have to spoof that one. And then the client will ask, like, uh, okay, I want to connect to this published application. And the server will ask, yeah, you are welcome to do that on a non-public IP address. So the connection will fail. But if you change all the red stuff here to the, to the public Citrix server IP address, you will get that connection. Understand? The master browser is just trying to trick you. It's, it's, the server is, 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 the Citrix server has these also the applications. You have, it's, it's no need to like, connect to this internal IP address. It's usually, usually like, like uh, they're having a firewall or something, or, 
or NAT, NAT network. So it's I also written a, um, a script that will take the output from the Citrix PS scan, that, that program that enumerate all the applications, and step through it and try to connect to all the applications. And after each connect, it will ask you how it went, like how, how, how did it went, and it will log these results. And um, I've checked like thousands of published applications, so it's, it's really a fast way to do it. It takes just a few seconds on, on every published application. So, the Citrix PS scan takes input an IP address, a minus for standard input, or an, an, um, a file, or the, the keyword random, then it reads from slash, slash dev slash u random to get the IP addresses. And it just sounds like, get me the, the, yeah, the, P, <laughs> the published applications, and the server will yeah, give it to you. The proxy is a little bit weirder. You have to bear with me. The client, you, you, you start up your proxy. It can be locally on another Linux computer or something. You connect to the proxy, and the proxy connects to the, to the server. Like, where is the master browser? The server will respond to the proxy, saying like, it is this non-public master browser IP address. But the proxy changes it to saying like, well, the master browser is the proxy. So your client connects to the proxy next time. And says like, oh, I want to run this uh, published application. Who sends it to the server, and the server sends back, welcome to this non-public master browser address. And the proxy will change it again, like, okay, okay. We change it again, saying like, you're welcome to this public IP address. And then it starts the, the normal TCP connection. You understand that to do this, we need UDP 16.04 to the Citrix server, and of course, 14.94, otherwise we can't connect, okay? So we'll make a demonstration now. Um, I will do a nmap scan and showing the tools. <coughs> Here it is. Don't sleep. So, so here's my, my Linux computer and um, I set an iPad address for it. No, I tried. I tried for like one hour, and when it didn't work, I, I, I'm really sorry. I, I really tried. Oh, it sucks. <laughs> what? What do you say? No, 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 it's a, it's a VMware, it's, it's, it's a VMware, I tried to find a font there, but it's like not working. Okay, it's, but I can tell you a little bit, <laughs> I'm, making, I'm making a port scan, it says like port scan for uh, 1494, and it's just yes, written a, a, a like three IP addresses I wanted to check. And well, 192, 192.168.0100 has an open port. So, okay, we'll try to connect to it with our Citrix client. So, I start up my Citrix client, and I said like, oh, it's, way far away. And I call it demo, it doesn't matter. It's published applications. And here, on the server location, I enter the IP address of the, of the, of the server that is open. Add, 
this one, and 92, 168.0.100 for this one. So, then you are just, ah, oh, it doesn't work. No, 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 it, it shouldn't work. <laughs> okay. So I can't, I can't right now enumerate the published applications because we have two interfaces and the one interface that I can't, I'm not connected to is a master browser. So I can't really get the published applications right now. A lot of people, I think, like having their Citrix servers and like trying to publish applications and like, well, I can't get it with the client, so people can't see my published applications. Well, surprise for you. <laughs> now running Citrix PSCAD. It's a small Perl script that just asks the server right away, like, what's your, what's your uh, published applications? And there it is. It says the output is like the IP address you connected to, and then it's the, the master browser IP address, and a boolean if we are like, like uh, need a proxy or not. And then there comes all the published applications. And there can be hundreds of them, you know. So, we now start up our proxy instead. So we use our proxy to connect to the, to the Citrix server. So I now have started up the proxy, okay? It says like, uh, the Citrix server, we are proxy for 192.168.0.100. That one, one couldn't connect to. And I will listen on this address, because this is a remote computer that is a proxy. So I will listen on this IP address and, and proxy it to the 100 address. Okay. Uh, so I have to change server location, of course, to the proxy. And uh, okay. And I try to and I try now to, to um, enumerate the published applications from, from, um, from the proxy, more or less. And the proxy tries it. But the proxy is like saying like, oh, I've, wait a sec. Because the first packages, you don't know really what it is. So the proxy says like, oh, stop. I, I recognize this is an enumeration of PR uh, published applications. So please try again. Okay? We'll do that. We try again. Oh, there it is. So, thank you, thank you. So, we can connect to like Notepad or something and hope it's not passworded. Anonymous. And it's more like, oh, I want it in a remote desktop window. It's more fun. <laughs> we will see. It. And that's like default, 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 finished. And I double click here and make a prayer. Yeah. It's awesome. It's <laughs> every tire works for me, yeah. Oh baby. <laughs> so here's a so well I'm now connected to to the the non-public master browser public application. And there are like, like three ways of breaking out of the environment. The easiest way is like file, open, explore. I will do that. <laughs> and no, no, it's, it's serious. I, I'm, I'm, I have done so many tests on penetration tests and so on. And if no one of these three works, you know, it's, it's like taking hours. But you have to learn these three. And that's like F1. Remember F1? If you have like a, like a SAP, uh, SAP L3, like login window or something, press F1 and start breaking out from there. And the, uh, the third is like the task manager. People, believe me, I, I like, like checked out like 
thousands of thousands of published applications, and these three works. I will show you the statistics later. So it's more or less like a file, open, and then you just take one, right click, explore, and then magic starts happening. Like, oh, where's the desktop or the desktop? Where? Right? Yeah. <laughs> It was hidden. Yes, it is. Yeah. I recognize this. Yeah. Well, well, let's see. Oh, let's see. What? You want me to hack it? <laughs> um, no, it's a 100 machine. Okay, cool. Well, this one way to do it is. Well, uh, think twice or something. So this is this was with the with the proxy, but it takes very very long time if you have like hundreds of published applications to test. So I've written another script <laughs> called uh, something. It's p r p a s dot perl, and it's it's just a small perl script that makes an ICA file. It makes it takes a template ICA file, changes changes stuff in it, and then launches it really easy. And and um, I can show the the template file will not see in this font, I guess. Something like this, bold or something. So it's nothing really. It's, it's not like uh, this peer 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 change to the published application name, and IP 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 is like changing to the the public IP address. And um, if you need uh, encryption, you just add the one line here. It's in the readme files. It's it's not that hard. <laughs> and then and then you. Uh, have the output, the output from the, the scanner program that enumerates the, the published applications, you have to re rename it to, to pass.v, and it's the, uh, it's, this is the, uh, the output from the, from the, uh, yeah, the scanner program. I can just, oh, if you want me, it's, it's not that. Oh, this sucks. Something like this, I guess. So it says like, yeah, my output here, but here it starts, like the IP address and everything. And this script will parse, parse it, like taking data from it and step through it. I can show you. So yes, running pass of PL. And it just looks up the IP address and the first application, creates an ICA file, launches the ICA file connects to it, okay, it's a, for this application called the policy, policy editor for administrators, you need a you need the password. I don't give you fucks, I just say, and the, and the output here, I just say like, okay, login required. Take the next one. It's like fax queue program, you need a password. So I say like, login required, and it's like, Fax cover page editor. Oh, okay, this works. Oh, what a surprise! <laughs> uh, so usually you can just press F1 to to uh, fax cover page editor and try to connect or, or ex try to explore something from there. Usually it tries to start up the web page, web 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 help, and um, one of the favorites there. The Open Explorer is much faster, but I can show you the, the task manager. In Citrix, you press Control F3 to get the task manager, and it's just like run Explorer. <laughs> oh, 
and this says now. Okay, this is cool stuff. The Citrix client asks like the the Citrix server wants access to your access to your computer, your files, your local files on your 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 your, your client. Of course, I want full access. <laughs> I will show you why. Because now I can just open my computer and have all the my local exploits just drag them over to the computer. <laughs> Uh, very beautiful. <laughs> oh, I have to like, oh, Pascal to see her. Um, back to the presentation somewhere. Here. Oh, so, so how does it look out there? I, I can't, I can't really tell you how, how many servers I, I've, I tried, but there, there are a lot. <laughs> and, and. Um, I will give you some statistics about it. It's not that that wow thing, but it's 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 a f uh, some nice facts. You have to remember these statistics. It's like it's not statistical, right? Of course, it's like more like a guideline or something. And it's because I'm using so short timeout values on the scans. And like there are, I met some very very large server farms, like have hundreds of applications, and on several IP addresses. So it's the same applications on like ten IP addresses, and that makes like it takes over the statistics. You know, so it's it's you have to be yeah. It's just more like guidelines or like where well, what to expect to find. Uh, Forty-two percent of the servers that had that had uh, this forty-two percent of the Citrix servers, you didn't need a proxy. Okay, the master browser was the public IP address tested, and forty-four percent of these servers that you just can connect to and enumerate all the published applications, had no published applications. 58% you, you, uh, of the of Citrix server, you needed proxy. And, um, but there were less percentage that hadn't any, any published application. Here's the fun stuff. The servers, the Citrix servers, that you didn't need a proxy for, and had published applications, so it removes like many. Uh, the average were like 12 published applications per server. 5% of all the published applications were, had, was anonymous and vulnerable. You understand me? So 5% of all the published applications on these conditions I could just connect to, get the desktop and everything, and, and like do what stuff I wanted to do it with. I have to tell you, like I didn't do anything. I really just tried to connect to it. <laughs> I, I did. I did connect to it. It let me in. I check if I can break out from the environment, and then if it could, I just logged off. If, if you needed a login, I never tried to log in, I, and I never tried to hide data or something, write to the hard disk and everything. So it's, so it's, but, no, whatever. Uh, Five percent of the published applications are anonymous and vulnerable, and that's about 20% of the service I tested. 20% of the servers was mine, or more or less. And if you just there check, it's almost every time it's on an internal network. Less than 1% of the published application you had anonymous access to, but somehow I couldn't break out from the, from the environment. It's good. It's like 2% of the servers. It's very nice. 92% of the published application required login, and like 3% of the Public application get an expected error, like like uh, licensing problems, like here yeah, not enough licensing or so. Um, 
for the servers that you need a proxy for, it's only 2% of the uh, published applications, about 10% of the servers that are anonymous and vulnerable. 1% um, of the published applications have some even less, like 1% of the servers also had an anonymous application that I couldn't break out from. It could be like a, like a DOS script or something, I tried to break with Ctrl C or something, and it you just quit me out or something. And 96% of the published application required login, and 2% of the public game gave expected errors. I can, for his, uh, don't need proxy, need proxy. Yeah, so it's, it's less. So the, the, the servers that are, that are behind a firewall or something that you are, don't have a public master browser seems to be less vulnerable. It's, yeah, people that don't have firewalls don't give care or something. So what, what can you do? Yeah, of course you need a firewall, you need, if you really want to have published application or something, try to invest in like a VPN or solution or something, so you need to authenticate real good. Um, and the breaking out stuff is also really hard. It's very, 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 very hard because like Windows, everything is like merged with this other, like the Explorer is like everywhere, like open something, closing something, everything is an Explorer or, or a web page or something, open a document, write a URL and you can click on it and you know, there's, there's a Internet Explorer and everything. So, I learned like strong ACLs and reg edit 32 like makes it and of course Citrix white papers you need white papers to, to, to connect uh, to um, to yeah there are like checklists on white papers to how to protect you if you don't into reading you can like buying stuff and there's uh, two commercial stuff called AppSense and one other called Secure Exe from Secure Wave. I think the Secure Exe way of doing it is really cool. Uh, they have a, also the website for Secure Exe. They have a demonstration site running and an anonymous FTP account where you can upload your, your exploits to test your system. I think it's cool. So, is this the end? Oh no, oh, you're just scratching. It's, it's, it's so much more to do, like, like if I sound like I want to connect to this very long published application name or something, what happens with the Citrix server? And there are lots of more stuff, protocol things that I really want to go into. I don't have the time right now. There are probably some vulnerabilities about the terminal server, but I, yeah, I will check it, maybe next year. Okay. So. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it and my tools are available. If you need me, I have my business card lying here. And um, uh, if you have questions, you can call me also. Yeah, I live in Sweden, so uh, no, the Central European time there. So don't wake me in the middle of the night. <laughs> Thank you very much.